welcome to the SVG TV News. So for today, Friday, April 1st, I'm Kalil Cato with the details for tonight. All mass gathering restrictions under the Public Health Public Bodies Measures Rules 2021 were removed as of today, Friday, April 1st. Speaking on NBC Radio this morning, medical officer and member of the SVG COVID-19 Task Force, Dr. Roger Duncan, said that persons are now allowed to gather at bars, places of worship, entertainment and other places in excess of what was previously stipulated, which was 10 persons indoors and 20 persons outdoors. With the changes, Dr. Duncan, however, recommends that these places should not exceed 75% capacity. Right, so I, the, the significant difference in this instance um, would apply to, to what we define as mass gatherings, uh, the rules surrounding mass gatherings. So there is no Persons are now allowed to gather in excess of what was previously stipulated. You remember previously we said expect people to ram places to capacity. You know, and this is for basic health and safety reasons that we are allowing people to gather in excess of the previously stipulated 10 and 20 persons. So this is allowed, and I, I think this is significant for um, places of worship, um, places of entertainment, restaurants and, and, and other such places urging people you know for health and safety reasons that you, you don't want to run your place up beyond 75 percent capacity so you still have that 25 space with which you could maneuver and you know and, and, and do some other things dr duncan said that the changes in the snro rules and mass gatherings restrictions do not apply to mask wearing and is appealing to persons who will be gathering to continue wearing their masks but most importantly, we urge people to continue to be vigilant. I mean, COVID has not gone anywhere. It's still here outside of us. Um, the numbers are rising, both in Europe and in North America and also in the East. So we have to be vigilant, continue to keep our hands clean, continue to wear our masks, especially for people who suffer from chronic diseases, underlying conditions, and the elderly. Please avail yourself of the opportunities to be vaccinated, please, and continue to shield as best as you could. Um, persons with, who, are, who are older, 60 years, 65 years and older, and persons who are even younger with underlying conditions, we recommend that they continue to shield. Um, COVID-19 goes in phases eh, and, 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 and what, what we call waves. So and outside of us, in the outside world, numbers are growing. I mean, um, in excess of 60,000 new cases were diagnosed in the UK mm -hmm. yesterday, um, going up to 40,000 in the United States. Canada is going with a positivity rate heading towards 20. So there's significant COVID activity outside of us. So we do ask people to continue to shield. The medical doctor said an increase in COVID-19 in the COVID-19 positivity rate is one factor that can result in the reverse of the now relaxed mass gathering protocols. We have what we have agreed on is that if we have a positivity rate over two week period that exceeds 5%, then we, we would be forced immediately to review these measures and to see whether or not added public health or increased, improved public health measures are going to be applied. So it's either positivity rate of greater than 5% over two week period, or if we have more than 10 cases in a day that are not related to each other. Now this is important, so let me explain this a little bit. So if for instance, we test and we have 10 persons testing, more than 10 persons testing positive on any given day, and we have no way, of connecting these people to each other, then, you know, we're going to take that, you know, we have another spike taking place and immediately there will be a review of the SR and those and what public health measures we would be applying. Um, if on the other hand, for instance, you have over 10 cases and let's say they occurred in a, a school that had a banquet and, and, and these 12 or 13 persons all attended this banquet and they had the same exposure, then we won't review because that would be what we call a local cluster which, which should be easier to handle. Despite the changes made to the COVID-19 protocols, vaccines will still be available, and Dr. Duncan is encouraging persons who have not yet done so to get vaccinated. He also used the opportunity to appeal to persons who are experiencing flu-like symptoms to go to their nearest healthcare center, as all flu clinics are now closed. Yeah, vaccinations, con vaccines, sorry, continue to be available to all the public health clinics that we now bring them. Um, we have... For the moment now, we have closed our flu clinic, so you're, you're free to access any one of our 40 health centers if you think you have any flu-like symptoms. Um, of course, if you're going there for that reason, we would like you to first of all indicate that you, when you, as soon as you get there, you will indicate that the reason why you're there so that we can take the national precautions, you know, for the other clients who are in the waiting area 
And always, please, if you come into the health center, please always wear your mask. We have to test people to know who's positive or not. If people are not turning up to be tested, then, you know, we, we, have, we have an issue. And I just want to make an appeal for persons who, because we have to keep a close eye on what is happening in the country. So if you turn up to a health center, for instance, or you turn up to the hospital, it's, it's very, very likely that a healthcare professional would ask for your consent to be tested for COVID-19, even if you have no symptoms at all. And this is one way for us to sort of keep a handle on things to be able to, to see where things are going. Because the goal here is to early detect any COVID-19 activity within the country. If we're able to detect early, we could intervene early, and if we intervene early, we could stop the spread. Giving brief data on this year's flu season, the medical doctor noted that while that they have seen a decrease in flu activities compared to previous years. We've had some flu-like activity as we testing negative for COVID-19. We've collected some samples, and these samples have gone to the Caribbean Public Health Agency for viral studies, and as soon as we get um, some reports, we will, of course, share with the public. Um, I think what we've noticed, though, for this flu season is that the, the, the flu activity was a little less compared to previous years. I'm unable to quantify it specifically for you at this point, but and, and we want to attribute, it, attribute um, this decrease in number to the mask wearing and hand hygiene that we've had and the social distancing measures. So even outside of COVID-19, um, masking, hand hygiene, and social distances, social distancing do work. The teachers amend that be the teachers' pension amendment bill was one of several bills passed in Parliament yesterday. The bill was tabled by Minister responsible for the public service, Frederick Stevenson, who outlined the reasons for the amendment. This would allow the person to apply to the Governor General for approval to be treated as having retired under Section 103 of the Teachers' Pension Act, as inserted by the amendment. The person would have been deemed to have resigned his office for failure to comply with the Public Health Public Bodies Special Measures Rules 2021 and is no longer a teacher in the service of the government. However, if that person had attained the age of 55 years at the time he was deemed to have resigned, that person may apply to the Governor General for approval to be treated as having retired. This person would be allowed to receive a pension, even though he or she was deemed to have resigned. The pension laws prescribe the circumstances under which pensions are granted, and resignation from office is not a circumstance in which pensions are granted. The other bills passed were the pension declaration bills for Leroy Jackson, Elvis Daniel, Antoinette Jardine, and Janice May MacDonald. The purpose of this bill, Madam Speaker, is to One, under Section 2, notwithstanding anything to the contrary contained in any law, the following period when Leroy Jackson served, A, as a teacher, are declared as pensionable service for the computation of retirement benefits, period A1, 2nd November 1982 to the 30th of June 1986, and two, the 1st of July 1986 to the 30th of September 1992. And to be, Madam Speaker, the Central Sewerage and Water, Central Water and Sewerage Authority and the National Irrigation Project are declared as public service and, non, and pensionable service for the computation of retirement benefits. And those periods are the 15th of March 1999 to the 31st of August 2001. Debating the teacher's pension amendment bill, leader of the opposition, Dr. Godwin Friday, and other members of the opposition side questioned what will be put in place for younger teachers who were impacted by the SNRO rules. They argued that the amendment, which will benefit a certain batch of teachers, is just another attempt to address some of the damage already done with the government's vaccination policy. He said persons who would ordinarily not qualify for a pension or the benefits that they would be able to seek early retirement and do it and make the application, and if approved, then they would be able to obtain their pension benefits. Madam Speaker, it says that it kicks in at the age, if you have attained the age of 55. But I know some teachers who lost their jobs because they did not 
vaccinate. They're not 55. They're not 54. What happened to persons who are 53? And they lost their jobs in the same circumstances. What we have before us today is this piece of legislation, as the Prime Minister rightly puts it, that will seek to address and respond to a narrow ban. A narrow indeed. When I read this, my, re my initial reaction was, wow, what a gesture. Truth be told, Madam Speaker, the problem that has been created with or by this vaccine mandate, which, as we can see, has clearly created serious, serious problems in this country. Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez and other members on the government side gave full support to the bill. That means you can get pension. No, a pension doesn't come about that if you resign before the time you're required to go. It's not just the number of years because the system must have an integrity too. The only difference in that regard is the police, if you do 10 years as a policeman, you could get a golden handshake if you resign. You do 20 years, you could get a golden handshake and a pension. Of course, depending on the number of years you do, above 20, it would be a greater or lesser pension. But that is an entirely different regime than for teachers and public servants. Are you with Madam Speaker? And this policy, this policy got our children back into classrooms before other countries got their children into classrooms. And yet and still, it was 205 days without face-to-face -face classes. It's going to take years for our children to catch up, Madam Speaker. But I, for one, am very glad that those policies were in place so that the long-term damage to our children. The Inland Revenue Department is seeing a high level of delinquency in persons paying property taxes. Comptroller Kelvin Pompey told SVG TV News they have seen an increase in the number of persons whose accounts are in arrears, and he urged these persons to visit the department to make the necessary arrangements to bring their accounts up to date. Pompey said the fall-off in payments is due to the COVID-19 pandemic and the 2021 eruption of the La Soufrière volcano. He said the tax exemptions for persons in the red and orange zones will end in September this year. Up to May 2021, over 5,000 properties were registered with the Inland Revenue Department from the red and orange zones. Property taxes over the past, especially um, the last two years with, with, with COVID, I think we have had, a, a, from, from the statistics alone, in the number, drop in the number of persons who are actively um, paying their property taxes. And we do know with the volcano last year, um, we had some, some, some waivers for properties in the, in the red zone and so forth. And I think at this point, there are persons who may have forgotten over the last two years because of everything that's been going on, that they should be paying their property taxes. And I want to encourage persons, if you have not been paying or your property taxes to come and essentially bring them up to date, we can work with you in terms of making um, payment plans. You do not have to pay the full amount at uh, one time. And so to come into the department, you know, ask our property tax officers and do the necessary um, action to get compliant in that regard. Well, the, 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 the waiver for the red and orange zone would have been for the 21-22 um, period. So it should come to end um, basically in September, October of this year. Pompey also said the department has recognized it is time to upgrade the technology used by the department to assist taxpayers in being compliant. He said the electronic filing system will soon be back online and the department will introduce a new electronic pay system later this year. As most persons would know, we have had a, a tax system that's been with us for um, over 20, um, 20, 22 years or so. And we are in the process of great upgrading, getting a new tax system. Um, as well as you would know, we are preparing to move into a new um, building, our new, our new headquarters. And also our um, software designers are in the process, as I speak, of working on the necessary architecture for our electronic filing, electronic payment, 
and our ability to um, accept debit and credit cards here at the department. And we anticipate that all those, including um, our electronic receipt system, should be in place um, quite soon. Our, our e-filing system should be back up um, within, I would say, a couple of weeks to a month. And our their debit, our ability to use debit and credit cards, uh, we want to have that in place, I think, within this second quarter coming. And uh, our, our e-payment system also by the third quarter of this year, we hope that persons will be able to make payments online for different tax sites. As St. Vincent and the Grenadines works towards reducing its food import bill, the general public is being urged to play their part in eating what they produce. The Rural Transformation Unit, a department within the Ministry of Agriculture, is leading a home garden initiative in an effort to strengthen the country's food security. The unit recently handed over seedlings to residents in various rural communities. Kurt Duggan of the RTU said the seedlings are not only to supply the homes of the residents with food, but eventually to act as another income stream. Out of the volcano caused by the volcanic eruption, we have seen needs arising in the rural communities most of which being a need for food. Secondly, economic, their economic standings would have fell due to loss of livelihoods, loss of jobs, and loss of means of transportation to their jobs, whilst out in the, in the red zones, orange zones. Um, a major request coming out from this would have been a means of getting food to their, their families what better way, what better initiative to bring out other than bringing seedlings or supplements to help assist in growing um, food in their own backyards. This would supplement their kitchens, it would also bring an income into their, their household if they sell the produce on the local market. The seedling recipients expressed thanks to the RTU and to the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines for the donation. If the seedlings mean as I am home not doing anything, I would take care of the seedling. Appreciative of the initiative that um, have been given unto us, so I'm glad for everything. Planting and the plants from with the backyard garden, excellent about it, and happy about it with the plants, as well as I follow up and follow up because I like to do a lot of planting, like lettuce. Anything concern vegetables or any kind of greens or anything like that, especially lettuce. I'm interested in that Too because of what? You could always come out your house and have something to make you happy, to make a dish and everything like that. So I say thanks to everyone. I just want to say thank you to the Ministry of Agriculture, especially Mrs. John and her team because they came to Spring Village and they didn't only just drop off seedlings. They took their time out and they showed us how to cultivate the land. They showed us how to take care of the plant, how they, stand, they should be in planting and we just want to say thank you. Say thank you very much and you are doing a good job. We know that in these kind of tough economic times we have to eat what we grow and we just want to say thank you to all who you know benefited from this and all who um you know give into this and we just want that everybody will just do their best plant and take care of their plants and also eat what they grow prime minister dr ralph gonzalez in parliament last evening announced that former member of parliament for north leeward calder williams will be accorded an official funeral i was informed on tuesday morning that he had died I spoke to his niece and immediately I gave instructions that he be accorded an official funeral in light of his own contribution to this country. I may just the Prime Minister, who asked all members to stand in silence for the former Member of Parliament, used the opportunity to pay tribute to Williams and expressed condolences to his family. Williams served in this Parliament between 1979 and 1984. He served one term in North Leeward. And in that period for a short time, he was the leader of the opposition. He ran on an NDP ticket in 1979, December 1979, 
work with the NDP, but he ended up with the NDP in latter years as a strong supporter in the Chateaubelay era. He has been always very strong in defense of farmers and working people. Um, he was a teacher, a policeman, community activist, and uh, his his health deteriorated. Williams had the distinction of being the first elected MP for the NDP on mainland St. Vincent. In 1979, the people of Fitzhughes told Sir James Mitchell, no Calder, no NDP. This happened on the very day that the NDP went to North Leeward to launch its candidate, Sinclair Robinson Sr. Williams was a budding trade unionist who, at the time, organized the estate workers into a formidable force. Most workers were supporters of the E.T. Joshua's PPP. With Mitchell at the time set to claim the support of the PPP for the newly established NDP, the people made the right call and at 26 years old, Calder Williams became the NDP's candidate for North Leeward and later the elected MP, where he served for many years as chairman of the, for the NDP North Leeward constituency division. Williams served in SVG in many capacities, as a farmer, a cricketer, a teacher, and a police officer. Government is set to purchase 1 million U.S. dollars in equipment to be used in the monitoring of the seismic activity at the Lasso Freire volcano. Director of the National Emergency Management Organization, Nemo Michelle Forbes, spoke to SVG TV News as Nemo prepares to celebrate Volcano Awareness Month this month in collaboration with the University of the West Indies Seismic Research Center and the University of East Anglia. Forbes said the monitoring network was improved prior to the eruption, but some equipment was destroyed, and recently the equipment at the Greggs Seismic Monitoring Station was vandalized. She urged the public not to interfere with any equipment they may find in the mountains, as it costs thousands of dollars to repair. These equipment are extremely, extremely important. If we did not have the equipment on the volcano and around the volcano um, last year, it, we would not have been able to give, uh, give information to the public to say we needed to evacuate. So we have asked and I'm really pleading with persons. You see uh, in equip, uh, any piece of equipment in the mountain nearby with solar panels and all of that, please do not touch it. It's part of the volcanic um, monitoring network that we need to be able to give you that information. It has to provide us with the information so that the scientists can do some analysis and let us know what is happening for us to really give you what is, an accurate picture of what is happening with the volcano. And Lasso is a volcano that has to be monitored closely all the time. And we really um, appealing to persons not to interfere with our equipment. You know, it's, it's quite, they're quite costly, um, you know, and there's, you know, I think most of our equipment, especially those that we're procuring, is a minimum of 40,000 US for equipment. And we really ask in persons not to interfere with equipment that we have to monitor the volcano. Nemo will be launching activities for Volcano Awareness Month on Monday with a photo exhibition at the Kingston Public Library. Activities also include movie viewings and interviews with persons from the Red Zone. Can I keep up emergency project? We have seven activities that we are undertaking there. So it's going to be an extremely busy few years um, for us coming out of the volcano, looking at the other hazards in our multi-hazard context, because I don't want us to lose sight that we are uh, in Santa and uh, as a small island state has many hazards that can impact us. So it's a lot of photo exhibition, a lot of sharing, a lot of filming, trying to capture what has happened and, you know, because People tend to forget, especially if you have not been impacted directly by the volcano, people tend to forget that, you know, we just went through that eruption and it is going to happen again in the future. Uh, maybe not our lifetime, as I said, but it is going to happen. Meanwhile, volcanologist and lead scientist monitoring the volcano, Professor Richard Robertson, encouraged Vincentians to take part in the community activities and reflect on last year's eruption. We have this amazing project that we've been doing with communities um, north of the Rabaka which involves um, trying to empower them to observe, to be aware of their, their environment a lot more. And as a result of that, one of the features of the activities that's coming up is this, this exhibition um, that is entitled um, Reimagining the Red Zone, quote-unquote Red Zone, which is the area that these people live in. And I'd encourage people to, to listen out for the exhibition and go and look at these photographs. And these photographs that tell the stories of the people who live with this hazard in the background because i think it tells a lot 
about resilience. It tells a lot about what Vincentians are about. And it tells a lot about the mountain itself and what it can do. I'd encourage them to, to go and visit the exhibition, but also take part in the other activities. Take the time in the next couple of weeks as we get close to the anniversary of the eruption to reflect on what the eruption did, what it meant, and what it means for St. Vincent going forward. Um, and I think if we do that, we're in a much better state for dealing with it next time it, it behaves itself. Monday will, be t will take place at the National Trust Building in Kingstown from 10 a.m. And the viewers of SVG TV will be treated to a special segment to mark the anniversary of the 2021 eruption of La Soufrière. The segment will be featured daily in our evening news from April 4th to 9th. In this segment, you'll hear from residents in the red in the red zone on the leeward and windward side of sides of the islands as they recount their experiences of the eruption. We will also feature exclusive interviews with persons who managed the disaster, including the National Emergency Management Organization, scientists at the UWI Seismic Research Center, and constituency representatives from the northern communities. We encourage you to tune in to SVG TV News from next Monday, April 4th, as we highlight the recovery and resilience of the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines on the one-year anniversary of the latest explosive eruption of La Soufrière on April 9, 2021. For a third consecutive year, the Beckway Easter Regatta has been cancelled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. However, a newly formed sailing club out of Beckway is planning a small three-day event on the Easter weekend. Here is La Larissa Pugsley Kidd. Planning for the Beckway Easter Regatta takes months to prepare, and while the COVID-19 numbers are down, the Beckway Easter Regatta committee did not have enough time to plan a full-fledged Easter Regatta. Commodore of the Beckway Sailing Club, Rory King, said, if they were to have a regatta this year, planning would have had to start eight months ago. However, eight months ago, the COVID-19 positive cases were in the hundreds. This planning starts in September and runs right up until three weeks before Easter Regatta. We will finalize all plans, put all things in place, um, also do our race courses and have all of that done so that our sailors would be well informed. There may still be some action in the south of Beckway in Friendship, as a newly formed sailing club called the Veteran Sailing Club of La Pompe is planning a three-day sailing event. They're trying to have a little race just to keep people motivated and, you know, to keep some attraction over the weekend. It is not going to be full-scale, I must repeat that, it's not going to be full-scale regatta. Just a club that has the potential to put off a few races on their own and we hope that all works out well with them. We would stand by in case they need some assistance to give them assistance to be able to pull off their, their little regatta. But I know the event will take place from Friendship Bay. So people that are interested will have to migrate over to the south side of Beckway to be entertained by that part of the sailing for the weekend. King said the people continue to feel the impact of COVID-19 and it is unfortunate that the COVID-19 pandemic is prolonging. It has put a strain on our economy and our tourism product. We also regret that this has happened because we know we have a lot of patrons that come and enjoy Bekwe Easter Regatta at Easter weekend. The Commodore said he is looking forward to an exciting year in 2023 when the next Easter Regatta will be held. Beckwith Sailing Club is going to have a couple of meetings with the Ministry of Tourism and the government on a whole. We're planning to have these meetings in May month, hopefully, to secure our spot for next year for Easter Regatta to take place. Beckwith Easter Regatta is a national event that attracts hundreds of tourists, especially sailors, from various parts of the world. Persons from mainland St. Vincent usually travel to Beckway to witness the races and all the events that are held for four days on the Easter holiday weekend. For SPG TV News, Larissa Pugsley Kid. Police have arrested and charged Rochelle John, a 31-year-old janitor of Bel Air, with the, offense, with the offense of grievous bodily harm. According to investigations, the accused allegedly inflicted grievous bodily harm on a 41-year-old security guard of the same address by throwing hot water on her body. The incident occurred in Bel Air on March 26th at 4 p.m. 
John is expected to appear before the serious offenses court for an arraignment.